The following tutorial is brought to you by WholeLoops.com. E Production time. I'm Reed Stefan, realist puppet in the game. Today, I've got my disrespectful guide to music production computers. And the reason I say disrespectful is because personally, I don't have too much respect for computers anymore. They don't excite me. I don't like thinking about them. I don't like comparing them. I don't like opening them up and fixing them, building them, updating them, anything like that. I use computers to make music, to make things happen, to make deadlines, and to make the sauciest presets and drum kits anybody has ever heard. So today I'd like to share three of my favorite things about each one of these music production machines and three problems that I think are just outright disrespectful to help you decide which computer is the right option for you to invest in as your first serious music computer. Starting out with the Razer Blade 15. I recently picked up this computer for two reasons. One, to learn FL Studio, the old versions and the new version, and two, to create my sauce presets. And those have to work for Windows users and Mac users, so I really didn't have a choice. It was time to get a Windows computer. That being said, the first thing that I absolutely love about this computer is its build quality is really above the build quality of all the other comparable Windows laptops as far as the trackpad working nicely, being thin and portable, and fitting well in a backpack with another laptop already in there. The second thing I absolutely love about this computer is how well it integrates with my different Apollos. And I have a couple different Apollos here in my house and it works well with an adapter or no adapter, depending on which one I'm using, that I will have stable latency-free vocal recording and mixing and UAD plugins every step of the way, which if you are a professional, there's a good chance you're gonna need an Apollo to do your vocal production and compatibility with that is gonna be really, really essential. So my number two reason is that it's one of the four approved Windows computers that you can use with your Apollo. UAD can't check their products against every PC under the sun because no two people have the same PC. Everyone just builds it out of different parts from different websites. How, how could them or any company effectively test their products against a computer that nobody has the same one? So I chose from that list when I went shopping for a PC. And if you're serious about music production, I recommend you do the same. Next thing that I absolutely love about this computer, number three, actually kind of have a hard time. I wanted to say performance, but really that's the first thing that I was really disrespected by was how bad the performance was on this, even compared to the MacBook Pro. It really chokes up quick when you start loading up Omnisphere's contacts and serums. So your workflow is going to have to include a lot of freezing and a lot of flattening. Uh, the other thing that I think is so disrespectful about this computer is the cooling system is so loud that you, there's no way you could record with this laptop running in the same room as the microphone. Once you go to compress your vocal, it will be so noticeable that your recording is ruined. With the razor blade, that thing just sounds like a rocket ship is blasting off. Even if you close all the applications and close the lid and just leave it there charging for an hour, you'll walk past it and the fan is still roaring for nothing. So I got to say the performance is really disappointing on this computer. The second thing that I think is absolutely disrespectful about this razor blade computer in a bad way is the speakers that are built in sound like they were made 15 years ago. I mean, they are horrible. You could get a better reference for your low end listening out of your iPhone, a way better reference. These speakers are by far the worst speakers I've listened to in a long time. And number three, the huge problem that I have with this computer is it struggles when you plug it into an external monitor. Running an external monitor pretty much consumes all your computer's processing power and leaves you with no functional CPU left to actually make music. So I really only use this laptop as a laptop on the go, doing simple product development things, customer service for whole loops and collaborating with Windows users when I have to. And I also like to explore FL Studio a little bit when I get bored of Ableton because there's some fun little tricks in there and why not because I have it. So that's the Razer Blade 15. I didn't really find this computer kept up with me well. So there's really just a short list of tasks that I'm even willing to use it for. 
Are your 808s too respectful? Do your beats lack that organic thump? Maybe you should try Urban Beats 4, our freshest harvest of kicks, snares, percussions, and 808s. So disrespectful, you might get mad you didn't try them sooner. Urban Beats 4 is available now only at holoops.com. Next up is the MacBook Pro 15. I gotta say, what I absolutely love about it is the thinness and the portability of it. It is very easy to carry around on your back even though it's a 15 inch computer. It runs every AU plugin and software I need. The other thing I love about it is that it can power an external display, 4K, no problem, even while recording your screen and producing or mixing. You can choke it up very easily if you load up some CPU intensive mastering plugins, or maybe a disrespectful vocal chain. So freezing and flattening, just like the razor blade, is gonna be a huge part of your workflow. I find myself making beats with less channels when I use this computer. I don't really see myself finishing too many projects on this computer. This is more of where things get started. I like to sit here outside with my laptop and vibe out to the sunset, or turn the lasers on at night and make something, and my laptop doesn't ever hold me back when I'm sitting here. It's once the project gets huge, or I go to mix it, or I try and finish the whole thing with vocal production all in one session that I'll usually transfer it off onto my desktop. Now, what I really dislike about the MacBook Pro is the one, the loud fan that comes on, and two, it overheats itself like crazy. If you don't have a ventilation pad or ice packs to put on it, it's gonna run into the same problems that the Razer Blade has. I wouldn't call either of these laptops a performance machine. You're more buying it for the portability, which is why I say just get a desktop if you're not DJing or working at different studios everywhere you go. Another thing that I absolutely hate about the MacBook Pro is even though the speaker quality is the best I have ever heard in a laptop, the speaker durability is the worst I have ever seen in a laptop. Both my MacBook Pro and my girlfriend's MacBook Pro, and she has the same computer as me, we both have one blown speaker on our computer and we don't play music at full volume. We just listen to our song as a reference after we're done mixing it. And just that simple reference listening alone was enough to blow the speakers on our laptop. So even though the MacBook Pro has one blown speaker, it still sounds better than the Razer Blade, but I gotta say I'm really disappointed in both of these computer companies and what a horrible job they've done with the sound system in their laptops. I always just have to plug it into something else, which isn't that big of a deal anyways. Moving on to the third computer, the Apple Mac Pro. This thing is from 2013. And I gotta say, even though it's old and it's i5 and these other computers are i7, this thing absolutely smokes these laptops in performance. I still get error messages and CPU overloads, but maybe one a day at most. I am not riddled with error messages like I am when I use the other computers. So that's the first major perk of this trash can computer is it is fast. The second thing I absolutely love about this computer is even though it performs about four times faster than these laptops, it's actually the same price. Like I said, I paid about $3,000 for each one of these computers to make sure I got the maximum specification that I could at the time used for the best deal I could possibly find because we all know the Apple Store is a disrespectful ripoff. There's no reason to buy the latest and greatest computer ever. I personally have always hung back one generation and just stayed a little bit behind the edge and been absolutely fine. So I would put the price of this desktop computer at a huge advantage considering you could find one of these for under three grand. And if you were to go to the Apple store and find the fastest computer they had, you'd be looking at a $10,000 purchase. So considering that being the high end, these Apple trash cans really are somewhere in the middle, but they perform very high-end performance. The third thing I love about it is this thing is so quiet. I have it right under my desk while I'm recording my vocals, and I can't even hear it after all the parallel compression. This thing is just a smooth chimney of hot air ventilation, keeps the processors cool, which allows them to work to their full potential. If I want to produce the beat, mix the vocal, master the song all in one session, the computer doesn't stop me from doing so. So like I said, if you're not DJing and you're not working in a different room every time you make music, 
you will benefit mentally and physically from getting a desktop computer. So that being said, what are three disrespectful things that I don't like about this computer? Well, obviously it's not that portable, even though you could put it in a backpack and take it somewhere uh, if there was a computer screen there. So that's the one big drawback. It's only portable if you're taking it somewhere that already has a computer screen for you to plug it into. The second thing that I really don't like about it is it needs some adapters to plug into modern USB-C ports like what I have here in my new Apollo. But the adapter was under a hundred bucks and it basically future proofs my computer as far as I could see. So I would consider the adapter a downside. And also along the bottom, it sucks up a lot of dust. There's a big ventilation system inside and it will definitely get filled up with dust if you don't constantly go down there and vacuum it out. And that's, I guess, a drawback that I don't have to do so much to my laptops because they don't live on the floor, but that's a little bit of a drawback. I'm quite happy with my trash can computer. And if you want the best Mac computer that you can get for under three grand, I would say this is it because it will smoke any laptop. These old trash can computers really do hold their own in today's production environment. So if you're if you're on a budget and don't wanna blow 10 grand on a brand new Mac and you don't wanna build some custom PC or you don't want a PC at all for whatever your reasons are, I really recommend the trash can computer. It has served great and I don't see myself getting rid of it anytime soon. So those are my three favorite features and least favorite and most disrespectful problems that I have with each one of these computers. And many of you may still be wondering, well, what do you recommend that's at an even lower price point for people who don't have three grand to blow on a performance machine? Well, I would say anything that you can get your hands on will work. People have been making great music with low performing computers for decades now. There's no reason that you can't too. But for the speed that I work at and the needs that I have to keep up with, I can't really work with a computer with less than 16 gigabytes of RAM and some sort of quad core processor. It doesn't matter whether it's i5, i7, or i9, as long as there's at least four processors going in there, you should have no problem running all of your music production needs. Well, there you have it. I hope this helped you understand the difference between some of the most popular music production machines, and I'll catch you guys next time with another tutorial. Peace out.